Today we're going to solve all the data problems we've been having with our trading bot by creating a candlestick object. Um, this video is really part two of a sub-series of an entire bot programming series, so if you have the time, I recommend you head back to the beginning of the series to see how we've gotten to this point. Also, if you're not very familiar with the concept of a candlestick in regards to trading and trading charts, I've got an older video all about that that I'll link to here. So if you're good on all that, let's jump right into the code. All right, so we've added a bit to our live.py code. The basic structure is still the same here. However, we've added a new component. Um, we created an instance of bot candlestick, which is a new class we've created, um, and we've started a developing candlestick. Um, so we basically have a candlestick in the process of being made with every tick, um, and then when our period ends, that candlestick goes on the stack of candlesticks, and a new developing candlestick starts to be created. So you'll see there's also some error code in here. Uh, Poloniex API has been timing out a lot just for random reasons. So I'm catching that exception and just trying again. If it times out, usually that does the trick. Um, you should probably have something a bit more robust than that. But I'll leave that as an exercise to, to someone on, on the GitHub. Um, so basically, tick, we're familiar with this function. That's kind of like every time we grab a price, which in this case is every 30 seconds. Our period length is, however, 300 seconds long. So basically, we get 10 data points in every candlestick. So let's take a look at the bot candlestick class. Every candlestick has several necessary pieces of information. That is, of course, the open, close, high, and low. Also, things we're going to need are you know, the current. That's the, the last tick that came in. The start time, the period, so we'll know when the candlestick is closing. Um, we put in something for, for output, and uh, you'll see in a minute what price average is. So back on live, the main way to interact with this class is through the use of the tip, tick function, where the current price of whatever chart we're on gets sent to this developing candlestick, which is an instance of the bot candlestick class. So what it says is it takes in this price. So if the open price hasn't been set yet, meaning it's a brand new candlestick and it hasn't gotten a price before, then this price is considered the open price. If the high price hasn't been set yet, meaning again that it's a brand new candlestick, or if the current price is greater than the current high, then set this current price to the high. Uh, likewise, if the low, if it hasn't been set yet, or if the current price is less than the previous low, then uh, the current price is the new low. And if the time is the current timestamp, is more than or equal to the start time plus the period, meaning this will be the last price that goes into this candlestick before it gets put on that stack of past candlesticks, then this is the closing price. Now keep in mind, these are all if statements, not if, else, or switch statements or anything like that, because one price could be uh, multiple elements in this. For example, the price could be the high and the close price. So we don't want to make these conditionals exclusive. Now another thing that's happening on the closing price is it's determining the price average for the, for the entire period of the candlestick. Now this is a somewhat controversial calculation. Different people are going to evangelize different ways that you want to um, tell the, you know, calculate the average of a candlestick. And the truth is it really depends on your strategy. Here I just defaulted to kind of one of the easiest way, you know, Wikipedia level um, calculation for the price average, and that's the candlestick high plus the low plus the close divided by all three. So the average price between those three elements, um, and we're calling that the average. Um, some of the indicators and strategy we use need a price average for the, uh, the candlestick. It doesn't use the high, low, open, or close. It uses some sort of average. So then I just have an output here that's showing what it is on each tick. We also have this isClosed function, which is used over here in our main loop. Um, that's the second half of this. If the developing candlestick is closed, which all it does is it checks to see if there is a closing price, which is set here. So, so if the current time is greater than or equal to the start time plus the period, the close price gets set, and the isClosed function or method returns 
true. So that's how we know back here to create a new developing candlestick. So pretty straightforward, but this will kind of um, solve all our data issues. So the next step will be to transfer all our backtest data that we're getting from Poloniex into the standard format and the standard object. And then all of these functions can live and work together and we'll actually be able to combine the live and the backtest scripts into one thing so we're not repeating any code. Um, also in the next step, we're gonna clean up a couple other things, uh, add some libraries that give some really powerful indicators uh, and move on from there. So let's see, let's just make sure this all works. Let's take a look. So here you can see that everything worked as expected. Um, if you go through each of these prices, you'll see the highs and the lows and the open and the close were being uh, set accurately. All right, so we'll see you in the next part.